Hi everyone, my name is State Senator Liz Krueger and I'm here today with an amazing group of survivors of the sex trade who want to talk to you about why it is so important for New York State to modernize our bills and our laws and to understand that we don't want to criminalize people who have been forced into this situation or who have ended up into this situation for economic reasons or out of control, out of their own control, captured by traffickers, forced into child pornography, child prostitution, threatened with being deported if they don't do what traffickers tell them to do, physically threatened, emotionally scarred. We don't want to punish these people. We want to offer them opportunities for safety and to get out of these situations and provide them what we all want, the opportunities to lead healthy, safe lives, making their own decisions for themselves, getting the educations they need to compete in our labor market, and, for, and in order to move on to full lives. And yet, there are others who think it's perfectly fine simply to legalize all the act activities involved with human trafficking and pimping and legal brothels. And one, we're here to say that is not the route for New York State to go. Absolutely not. But the bill that I happily sponsor with Pam Hunter in the assembly, and I don't know if Pam's going to be able to join us here or not. Oh, hello, Pam Hunter. Get up here. Get up here. <laughs> That was perfect timing for me to say your name and then you magically appear. That was, that was good. I like that. Thank you. So the bill that Pam Hunter and I co-sponsor is an effort to make sure that New York State modernizes its laws in the right ways. And that means to not create criminal penalties for the survivors and the people in um, forced sex trade but not to open our doors to welcome more human traffickers, more pimps, more abusers. And I have to say, if you spend any time talking to some of the men and women who are here today or who I've met with over the last several years um, in the city of New York, and I know Pam Hunter has as well, you hear pretty disturbing stories about violence and abuse and forced drug use and threats. And that's why I think talking about the folks as survivors of something amazing who want to go on with their lives, who need to go on with their lives, and really no reason to face criminal penalties, but rather be given the helping hand that the state of New York ought to be providing, that you too would understand what the right answer is and what the wrong answer is. And I will tell you also that Pam and I are working hard on our bill and that sometimes it's hard to get our colleagues to pay attention, partly because a lot of people just, if you say prostitution, they just are like, oh, there must be other things to work on today. Oh, I'm a little uncomfortable with that conversation. Oh, I'm sure that's not an issue in my district. So for the record, it's an issue in every district. In New York City, in all five boroughs, in upstate New York, where Assemblywoman Hunter comes from, and often there's actual structural arrangements where women are brought down the highways from north, or they're brought up the highways from Queens, having gotten off of airplanes against and forced into lives that they never intended to be in. So that it's very, very important to, to educate our colleagues and the public that this stuff is real, it's doing enormous harm, we can do better, we must do better, and for my colleagues in both houses to please give these folks some time, hear their stories, understand why this isn't something you should turn your back on, even if part of you just wants to go work on something else today instead. So with that, I'm gonna introduce Assemblywoman Pam Hunter. Thank you. Busy day today. Good afternoon. Um, this isn't about a movie and sensationalization 
of uh, what we see in, in Hollywood and, and that at the end, um, you know, many times we get the guy and, and everything works out fabulously. This is real life folks and it's really happening and the scars and trauma run very deep and it lasts a lifetime. And so I implore any one of my colleagues uh, to have a conversation with the folks in their district. If the folks here aren't, you know, people that you know, there is not a district in this state that is not affected by trafficking. Um, where I reside, I live right there on the throughway uh, 90 um, and where 81 meet, north south to Canada. Um, you can ask any transportation provider whether they, you know, run those big trucks or whether bus drivers. You see signs at our rest stops. So obviously, you know, there is a problem if we're putting signage in our rest areas saying, if you see something, say something. This is a very real significant issue. And now we're seeing, especially with many uh, refugees crossing the border, the potential for exploitation is even greater than it has ever been. And many people are unaware of the sex trade. Um, it isn't a dirty little secret. It's, it's happening right now, right in front of our faces um, to people that we know, people in the community that we're thinking, um, you know, maybe they're not someone I know, but they're a community member. It's our, uh, it's our responsibility to make sure we uplift and take care of the people um, who are involved in this situation. And far too long, uh, law enforcement has been focused on punishing victims. This is not where we need to be. We need to be providing the services and benefits and, and getting people out of the situation. I know the folks from Covenant House, and I don't know if they're here today, um, listen to their story about the pimps and the people who are parked right outside of their front door. And think about everything that's been going on with COVID and about folks who are just wanting to, maybe I just want to sleep in a clean hotel room tonight by myself instead of having to live, you know, in a situation with so many other people. And then I'm buying you things. And then it seems like, you know, we're really into a relationship. And the next thing you know, there's a room full of people and you're involved in this whole sex trade situation. This is real. This is somebody's son or daughter, men, women, transgender, LGBTQ uh, people. It is affecting all facets of our life. And runaway and foster youth are definitely targets as well. So we have to do better. This bill that we are carrying is so impactful. It will save lives. This is not some folksy hashtag we're talking about. We're talking about our friends and neighbors who need our help desperately. Sexual trafficking is real. It's happening everywhere in the state. And this bill shines a light and says we are going to do what we can for the people who are victims, who we want to be thriving survivors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Question. Okay. First of all, can you all hear me? Thank you so much, Senator Kruger and Assemblymember Hunter, for what those words that you said today were so powerful, but also for leading this effort. I work at Covenant House New York, where we serve young adults experiencing homelessness and human trafficking, and the pimps fight target our youth. Up to 20% of our young people have had experiences that fit the New York State definition of human trafficking. We serve over 2,000 young people a year, so we're talking several hundred right in New York City. So we need this bill. We need the services in this bill that are not in any other bill. Um, that is so important. And we also think there is no reason to ever criminalize someone selling sex, right? They're either a victim or someone who is marginalized or vulnerable person who's not, help, not hurting anyone. But why on earth would we let the sex buyers and the promoters and the pimps off the hook? As I said before, we fight each day to keep the pimps away from our young people at Covenant House. We've noticed an uptick during COVID. And a couple years ago, the pimps were so brazen, they actually put an ad in Craigslist saying, hey, you live at the Cove, we can help you make more money. 
Fortunately, we were able to call our friends in the anti-trafficking unit in the Manhattan DA's office, and they did an investigation and found a trafficking ring. But under full decriminalization of prostitution, no one would have investigated that ad because it would be completely legal to recruit any of our young people over the age of 18. It would be completely legal for them to set up a recruitment center across the street from our homeless shelter, which is what they would do. I know a lot of people think that the commercial sex, like consensual sex trade and human trafficking are completely separate. But keep this in mind, they are not. Because if there were no sex buyers, there would be no sex trafficking. Just want to say that again. If there were no sex buyers, there would be no sex trafficking. So why would anyone want a bill that would decriminalize sex buyers, which would increase them, which would increase human trafficking? Instead, this is the bill we need. Senator Kruger, Assemblymember Hunter are leading the way to help stop human trafficking and aid survivors of the sex trade and survivors of human trafficking. So thank you so much. Thank you, Senator. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Christian Eduardo, and I am a survivor of international domestic sex and labor trafficking. I am a Latino immigrant a member of the LGBTQ plus community, a person living with HIV, and a human being dealing with the long lifetime consequences of being trafficked, being exploited, being in the life, uh, being abused by sex buyers. Due to the acute vulnerabilities I face as a young adult, I was trafficked when I was 24. Trafficking is happening also to adults. Uh, because I was an immigrant, I didn't know the laws, I wasn't able to speak English, I didn't have real opportunities. I was sexually and physically exploited for the profit of my traffickers and for the male entitlement of the sex buyers who have disposable income. And today I am here representing all the voices that most of the time are left out, the voices of immigrants, the voices of Latinos, the voices of people of color, the voices of those who are not native English speakers, because even right now, people are being exploited. People uh, that cannot fulfill their basic needs are being exploited by traffickers, brothel owners, and sex buyers. With the Sex Trade Survivors Justice and Equality Act, we can make it so those in prostitution, those that are being bought and sold, regardless how they identify, are not prosecuted or punished that they have access to critical services they need, including physical and mental health care, education, and economic empowerment solutions. Everyone on the sex trade have the right to exit. We have the right to not be bought and sold. Human trafficking is real, and I am here to remind you that I experience it on my own skin. We survivors continue suffering from the trauma of exploitation until our last breath, until the last day on this earth. We are the ones with criminal records for actions committed under conditions of coercion, fraud, debt bondage, or uh, from our traffickers, the brothel owners and the sex buyers, raping us every single day. I appeal to you, stop criminalizing survivors, stop criminalizing the people on the sex trade. Keep accountable those that are raping us. We must enforce the laws that hold traffickers and patronizers accountable and liable for their exploitative actions. Sex buyers are not helping our communities. Sex buyers are exploiting are the most vulnerable youth, transgender individuals, runaways, immigrants, Latinos. They are not helping our communities. They are destroying them. Um, this legal approach of, legal, of decriminalizing the people who is being bought and sold, engaged on the sex trade, and keeping accountable all the exploiters is called uh, the equality model, but it's not only stop that. Equality model is about increasing and creating real opportunities, uh, services and resources for all those engaged on the sex trade. Because remember, if any of us have a price, we all have a price. We need to remember that. I don't want anyone else to suffer what I went through. No one's deserved that. I don't want anyone to be exploited when I was the most needed. So I'm really making a call for all the Senate, for all the members of the Assembly, please support the Sex Trade Survivor Justice and Equality Act. Believe in survivors, listen in survivors. 
listen and believe in us. Thank you so much, Christian Eduardo. So you've heard today about how our most vulnerable and unsupported kids are seen by pimps as prey. They're recruited online and literally from across the street of the Covenant House. Homeless shelters for runaways. And this isn't happening just in New York City. This is happening across the state, at group homes, at schools, at middle schools. In middle schools, kids are being recruited. Our most vulnerable kids are being recruited to enter the sex trade. You've heard firsthand from Christian Eduardo about the harms, the psychological, physical, spiritual damage that being repeatedly bought and sold in the sex trade, what it causes. Disadvantaged youth, black and brown mothers living on the poverty line, people with disabilities, those afflicted with addiction, these are the people that the sex trade needs to create a thriving flesh trade. And why? It's very simple. So that men can continue to have access to sex whenever they want, with whomever they want, however they feel like it, on demand. As long as they've got the cash. Me Too has left these vulnerable New Yorkers behind. Right here in this building, year after year, Lawmakers have passed laws to protect women who work in offices. But every woman and every young adult deserves to live free of sexual harassment, exploitation, and violence. And that's why we're here today. The Sex Trade Survivors and Justice Act continues some really important progress that lawmakers here have, have undertaken for the last decade and a half. Each and every year we have recognized that this is exploitation, that we're not doing right by our young people, that we have to give them opportunities, not oppression. We've held, held men accountable for sexual misconduct. And we have to continue that. The sex trade is violent, it's racist, it's misogynistic. It's where human trafficking and commercial exploitation meet. It's where it happens each and every day to countless, countless people. I encourage every reporter here, when you write your stories, go to your local district attorney's office. Go to the, the US attorney's offices. Just look at their press releases. You will find some of the most horrific human rights violations happening in our state and where they happen is in the sex trade. And this is documented, indicted cases. You will find it there. And I also ask that when you write these stories to please make the distinction. When we talk about decriminalizing prostitution, you may refer to it as sex work, we don't. When we talk about this, we are talking about the people who are abused in the sex trade. We are not talking about decriminalizing people who are profiting off of somebody else's prostitution. We are not talking about the men who feel that they have a right to buy sex whenever they want and fuel this industry. And what we also have for you when you write these stories is we've got the examples. This team here has spent the hours looking on the hobby boards online where men talk to each other and rate women like they were rating restaurants on Yelp. And you have to include that side of the story as well. So just in closing, I just want to reiterate that the, the Sex Trade Survivors Justice and Equality Act, it is in fact the next big step in uplifting those individuals and providing the legal, legal protections and social services that they deserve. Again, it extends to young adults, the same legal protections that New York State legislature extended to children. Yes, it wasn't that long ago that we thought children were, should be criminalized, and they were arrested, and we stopped that. And we now have to realize that people who are exploited in the sex trade deserve services, not arrests. The criminality should remain with those who buy human beings to use for sex and those who profit from it. 
It also extends the age of eligibility for services. This is a really, really big deal because it ends now at 18. And we know that the minute that somebody turns 18 does not mean that they're less worthy of, of our compassion and our care to give them exit strategies and give them the deep services that they need that you have heard about here today. So the, you know, the role of policymakers is to protect the most vulnerable people among us. It's really their num your number one job. So we really, really want you to take a deep dive into this issue and take a stand and sign on to this bill and help us bring progress to New York. Thank you. You already heard a lot. I'll just, um, uh, you know, I was very struck by, uh, I don't know your name, your it's testimony. Um, and one of the reasons is that the abuse started post the age. You know, the argument is, uh, is that somehow someone turns 19 and then they're not, they're no longer coerced and they're no longer pressured. And that's ridiculous. You know, how many of us still feel coercion and pressure in aspects of our life? Imagine being 19 years old and you were sex trafficked when you were 15 or 16 and now you're 19. Now it's not, you're okay. So they're going to put you on the street to lure you, to lure um, men uh, to the 15 and 16 year olds. And that's exactly what we're creating here. So, you know, I've met so many uh, sex trafficking victims uh, during the course of the work that I've done in this in this arena, and they come. They often uh, don't come out of the life until they are 19 years old, 20 years old. Uh, they uh, reach a point where uh, they're capable of communicating. Uh, their their abusive situation. We're not we're not going to have that anymore. You know, if you didn't didn't come out when you know of your situation by the time you're 17 years old, forget it. It's over for you. That's evident in our in our lack of services, and that's what we'd be creating by completely uh, legalizing bad men's behavior. So. Um, so I believe that this bill is the bill that we should pass because it is the only bill that is going to stop young people from being coerced in the state of New York. Thank you.